This is not the silent video, okay? Welcome back. It's my channel and it's something special. I just have a hot dog on my shirt today. It's just keeping it cool because the topic um, of conversation, one my conversation, is serious this week. This week I'm chatting to you about the reincarnation of Anne Frank into Barbara Carlin. And of course, it wouldn't be a story about reincarnation if I couldn't just do like a quick recap about and Frank's diary and sort of like her last few months. Anne Frank kept her diary between 1942 and 1944. Her last entry was in August 44, and a few days later, on the 4th of August 1944, family's hiding place has been tipped off and the Gestapo found them and they transported her whole family. So her dad Otto, mom Edith, sister Margot and Anne to um, the concentration camps. Otto has been separated from the family because he was sent to labor camp, whereas um, the mom and the sisters Frank have first been sent to Auschwitz, uh, where her mom actually died of exhaustion, and then Margot and Anne were sent to Bergen-Belsen, which was like another labor camp. This is where Anne's head has been shaven as well, and this is also where she met with her childhood friend, Goslar, so they were kind of communicating from one fence to the other. And then was like really sick. So she was asking Gosler for like any food or anything that she can kind of like provide to Margot and her. Both Margot and Anne actually died from typhus. So Margot died like only a few days before Anne. And they have been buried into the mass grave. So their actual, like where the actual bodies are is kind of roughly, only roughly known. Um, what else is only roughly known is the actual death date, so like it's speculated that Anne Frank died on March the 12th, 1945. And what's so, so frustrating is that the British horses freed the camp on April the 15th, 1945, so not even a month. So just a month after that. This is like why this story fascinates me so much, because like they managed to actually stay in their hiding place in Amsterdam as Jews and like survive and everything has been documented for like over two years and then just to be caught in the nick of time like very last minute. What's really sad about that situation though is that um, Anne Margot and the mom actually died thinking that uh, Otto has died as well which didn't end up being true. Luckily for Otto he actually passed off as a young man, well younger man, so when they moved into the labor camp, the SS officers thought like, he's younger than he looks, let him go to labor camp and just work his ass off. But luckily for him, that meant that he has managed to like be liberated in the nick of time and has been saved and he's the one that actually made Anne, um, Anne Frank's diary available to the public. Now that we have this quick recap, we are moving on about nine years after 45, so we are in year 1954, which is when Barbara Carlen has been born in Sweden. During this story, I'm going to kind of refer to the reincarnation research website. There's this guy that has been really famous because he has spent most of his life researching this. His name is Ian Stevenson. So this is sort of his website and all of his findings and I'll kind of like pinpoint um, pinpoint bits and pieces referring to reincarnation when we're talking about Barbara Carlin's life. The first references to Anne Frank came up when Barbara was only two years old. So she would approach like one of her parents and be like, why are you calling me Barbara? My name is Anne. And the parents kind of like brushed it off at first, but then it kind of continued. She's like, why are we living here? Like, my house has like red tiles on the rooftop, you know, has different stairs. Like, this is sort of like where I have lived before, like, you are not my parents, that type of vibe. Then she started speaking about these dreams that she's having, where these officers are breaking through the door and taking her whole family away. And this is when her parents were like, maybe this is more serious than we have thought, so they sent her to see a psychiatrist. And luckily, actually, Barbara had like some common sense here. She was like, I'm not crazy, but just nobody else believes me. So I'm just gonna tell the psychiatrist, you know, completely this is not true, you know, like, hey, it was just a dream. So she does, and luckily psychiatrist just tells like, yeah, this is just like a normal thing, it's a phase, it will pass. So her parents finally calm down. And 
And Barbara actually doesn't mention anything else on this topic for the amount of years until in school her teacher starts speaking about Anne Frank. And she's just there sitting really confused because she's like, I'm not famous, but I'm Anne Frank. Why is my teacher speaking about me? But again, because she knows nobody has believed her, she's kind of like keeping this to herself. All the way until the age of 10, when her whole family goes to this trip to Central Europe, so they go to Amsterdam as well. And in Amsterdam, like, there is this sort of incident where her dad kind of wants to call a cab and he's like, yeah, let's go, obviously, one of the things that we want to visit is Anne Frank's house. Like, before he could even hail the cab, Barbara is there like, don't worry, I have it. Like, I'll just walk, like, it's really close, we don't even need a cab. And her parents are like, okay, this is odd, like, how do you know, you have never been here, you know, this is the time in the 50s. Well, this would have probably been 60s, right? My math, yes. This would have been 64, right? <laughs> this would have been 64. So, you know, there's no Google, there's no internet. So to their surprise, she actually manages to walk them directly to the house. And she immediately, when they're in front of the house, she says they have changed the steps. Like the steps weren't looking like this before. So her parents are like, okay, this is still weird. They go inside, she describes this experience, like she felt really bad energy, like really bad vibes in this place. She felt like really fearful. And even her mom kind of was like, we can go, like you don't have to be here. But she insisted to go into Anne Frank's room. So she does, and immediately in the room, she was like, where are the pictures? Like Anne Frank used to have pictures on her wall. Where are the pictures? And now her parents are just completely freaking out. So the mom goes out, speaks to one of the people working there, and just asks him, like, were there ever any pictures in the walls? And he says, yes, there were. We removed them because other people, other tourists, would kind of, like, try to grab them, keep them home, like, you know, carry them home as souvenirs. Something I would probably do. Okay, go, don't say to camera. We're probably gonna go immediately after quarantine there. Anyways, <laughs> really that I did that. And this is when her parents kind of finally came to the realization, like, this is something that's real. So her mom hugged her, said to her she's not alone anymore. Basically, what you need to know about her parents, they're both Christian. So obviously this kind of goes against their religion, against everything. So they are still skeptical. It's not like this is something they would have ever wanted to make public and just chat about it every day. But finally, you know, they kind of accepted that this is what it is. She is the reincarnation of Anne Frank, like, because how else would she have known all of this? One thing that I didn't mention, which kind of makes this story even more plausible than maybe other incarnation stories you have heard about, is that Anne Frank's diary actually hasn't been translated to Swedish until at the best 60s. So, and she, as we know, Barbara was born in 1954, so she started speaking that she is Anne Frank in about 1956. Again, she couldn't read at two years old. So how could she have actually started saying all of this? How could she have known? So once they came back from this trip to Europe, Barbara actually kept writing. She was like really talented and had sort of like developed this habit of writing for years. She actually published a book called Man on Earth when she was 12 years old. It has nothing to do with Anne Frank, okay? I think came later. But now would be the perfect time to kind of pinpoint on a few patterns that the researchers have pointed to when it comes to reincarnation. What you need to know is usually as soon as kids start talking, so sort of from the age of two, they will actually start remembering and asking questions like why are you calling me by the wrong name? Or where is this member of the family? Naming those members of the family. I'm going to link two other really interesting stories. One is a podcast episode about Shanti Devi and that the other one is Candle Ray's video of um, World War II soldier. Well, the kid that was reincarnated as World War II soldier. Because those are like also super interesting because people actually name the members of their family. They can tell you like geographically where they are as well. Usually they have like similar personality traits, so like writing in this case, and they kind of like end up pursuing either that career, like either that career or habits in that area and hobbies in that area. 
sometimes they look similar as well, kind of Barbara, like at that age, looked similarly to Anne Frank. Um, something that doesn't actually really happen here, but it happens in most other cases, is that usually kids kind of drop this by the age of like seven and above. So if you're a parent, your child starts talking about, you know, other family, how they are this person, you know, how, how they have died, all of that. Um, and if you want to actually pursue that, research that, believe that, which I find so fascinating, you should definitely pursue it, because that investigation just in itself is, is just so bizarre and so thrilling. You should do it when they're little, because that's when they're going to remember most of the memories, and, I mean, they're kind of going to, like, drop that act by the time they're, like, seven and above. And why? Well, because either the memories are going to start to fade, or also because, unlike the belief that you might have if you're a parent experiencing this, the child is actually going to stay connected more to the biological family. And they're eventually going to realize, even if you introduce the child to the members of the previous lifetime family, they're not just going to choose them over you. Like, they just want sort of to understand. And in many stories, have just the answers to some of their questions. And also, what researchers manage to pinpoint in this case in particular, and this is just so bizarre, is that usually reincarnates can actually be of any religion. They don't have to necessarily be the religion that they have died as. So, and Frank was Jewish, Barbara Carlin was Christian. And what's bizarre about this is that basically, well, the whole Holocaust has happened on the basis that Jews were the other and that we should exterminate the Jews. If Nazis have known this whole time that Jews can reincarnate as Christians, then the whole Holocaust wouldn't have happened. Well, that is debatable. I don't have a feeling, I mean, <laughs> this is what they pinpoint to, but I don't have a feeling like Hitler would be like, yeah, reincarnation, we believe in it. I kind of doubt that he would have been, like, super <laughs> believable. kind of feel like he would have been a bit skeptical, but, you know, maybe I'm just misjudging Hitler's character. As I mentioned, what makes this story the most plausible was that that book wasn't even published in Swedish, she couldn't have known about it. Another thing that makes it really plausible is that Barbara Carlen actually met up with the only living cousin of Anne Frank at that point, whose name was Buddy Elias. He actually heard about her through her publisher and was like, yeah, just go meet her. And he was really skeptical about reincarnation. As he was also the president of Anne Frank's foundation, it kind of put him in a vulnerable position because it's like, what are the members going to think? He met her, you can actually listen to like their chat online as well. And afterwards, when the journalists have asked him, does he believe that she is actually Anne Frank? He said yes. They also keep in touch and she visits him like every time she's in Switzerland. Now what's missing from this story that is sort of more present in some reincarnation stories is the remembrance of death. So usually people remember how they have died or it is that particular impact that leaves them with like some scars, usually birthmarks. So it is like where they have been either shot or cut or something. And it's usually the people with traumatic deaths that kind of have been incarnated as well. I'm not saying that this is not traumatic. I'm saying this is the part where if you are skeptical about reincarnation, you will probably call on it. However, it doesn't have to be death. It can relate to like really deep phobias as well. So Barbara, through her life, has always had like really dislike towards showers and also towards having her hair cut because showers in Auschwitz meant that you were sent to the guest chamber and haircuts, well, they shaved and Frank's hair off just to disconnect her from her own identity. But also, as I mentioned, Barbara always had the fear from the police officer. So in her childhood, she would dream that they're taking the door down to like take her family away. And then as she grew older, she would always feel uneasy, even if like a police officer was to stop her on the street. She would still feel really uneasy and kind of consider fleeing the scene as well, even though she wouldn't have done anything wrong. Also, there is this, like, really weird event, and I don't know how nobody has made a movie about this. Like, there's so many dumb movies out there, and this just sounds like such a great original idea. Basically, Barbara, Barbara went ahead to work as a mounted police officer, which means she's working with police horses. 
that's at least what I think. I'm so sorry if I'm wrong. I'm so sorry. Um, and throughout her job, she has eventually met this police officer that she immediately felt animosity towards because she says he was the reincarnated Bergen Belsen officer. Just imagine, you were just there beating like another reincarnated person, then they are the freaking Nazi officer. How would that be? Like, just the background stories? You have everything. You have the animosity, you have the background stories. Not every movie has to have a love story, okay? Where was that? <laughs> but, as I mentioned, her memories never actually left her. And she even went ahead to write a book about her reincarnation experience that's called And the Wolves Howled. And the book goes to say that even these guards, these wolves, have prosecuted Anne Frank in her previous lifetime. She's not going to allow them to touch her in this lifetime. And it goes to say that the soul preserves from one lifetime to the next to, like, comfort the others and tell everybody to, you know, stay strong, stay powerful. <laughs> and I mean, there's no better ending to any story than that, isn't there? <laughs> if you decide to go onto the reincarnation research website, take some things there with a grain of salt, especially like the most popular, the most read articles. I found one where they just say like Priyanka Chopra is the reincarnation of this actress, and then Nick Jonas is the reincarnation of this actor, basically trying to pinpoint that they were meant to be. Yeah, don't trust everything you see on the internet, if you didn't know that until now. But that's the story of Barbara Carlin. Producers and directors out there, I invite you during this video to actually make a movie about this. Um, and down below in the comments, I expect all of you to let me know well, who would you like to be the reincarnation of? Like, if you had a choice, who would you have really loved to reincarnate as? Mine's pretty obvious, because this is the only reincarnation video I'm making so far, so hey. <laughs> and is that it? Is that it? Well, the only other thing is, obviously, like this video if you like this type of content. You know, put some recommendations below. I'm going to do what you recommend. And then uh, click on that bell button, you know, so you get notified immediately. And then you can put, like, first in the comments, second, third. Because apparently that's how YouTube works, and it really matters to some people that their comment is the first one. I think that's how it works. Does it? Does it? Famous YouTubers? Does it? Talking to the empty room again. Okay, it's time. It's time. Bye, guys. Uh, bye. Ciao.